Martinez. Welcome to Tuesday Tuesday. Today it's me and Jason talk about the hollow. Now, before we get into today's show, I do want to say something for everyone who was here. You know, last week, and everyone that fun, but we have officially retitled the Frackles. That's not going to happen anymore. We've done so any Frackle jokes done. So, please. Be well there, and if anything pops up in that box about freckles, minus talk about my other channel, I will remove it. Okay, Jerry, go and Beverly, hey, Dev Dog. Yes, I had tacos. How are you guys doing tonight, Jeff? How are you? I'm doing totally stinking awesome, DJ. Nice. How about you, Nancy? How are you I'm, doing tonight? I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm still here. Nice. Even though it's hot. <laughs> um. No, like I said, guys, tonight we're talking about the horror, which is a Netflix original anime series, and it's a good one. <laughs> uh, so let's. Them to bless us and talk about the show. Who wants to start us off tonight? It was like, it was like Jason is starting us off tonight. So take away Jason and feel about the hollow. All right, so the hollow starts out. And this guy's a teenager. He's waking up. He looks around and he's in a concrete room. Like, like the center block looking type brick walls. And he looks around and he's thinking like, you know, where am I at? He has no clue what's going on. And he sees a teenage girl laying on the floor asleep. So he goes over to her, you know, to make sure she's okay. He's like, hey, are you okay? She finally comes around, and she looks at him, and she's like, who are you, and where am I? Right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they hear a voice that says, y'all keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. And there's a teenage boy on the other side of the room laying on the floor. And all of a sudden, he looks up and goes, wait, who are you, and where am I? Right. So the premise of this is you've got three teenagers in a concrete room that have no clue where they're at. Right. They're looking around and, you know, they notice there's no doors in this room. There's like a vent up top. There's like a little drain at the bottom of the room. And then there's a typewriter in the room. And that's it. There's nothing else. And they're talking, and, you know, one of the guys is like, well, what's your name? And he's like, honestly, I have no clue what my name is. And the funny thing is, the other two were like, that's ridiculous. How do you not know what your name is? I don't know what my name is. And then the other guy's like, actually, I don't know what my name is either. And the girl's like, this is ridiculous. And they're like, well, what's your name? He didn't know her name either. 
So they wake up in this room and they have like no recollection of anything. They have no memory prior to waking up in that room. They know nothing about themselves. They know how to talk. They don't even know what their actual abilities are, like what talents they have, what they can do and can't do. Right. And that's where the, this journey kind of begins. So they're looking around trying to figure out, you know, how to get out of this room. And, you know, they're trying to lift each other up, see if they can make it to that vent. And they and DJ, I'm trying to remember what prompted them. Oh, they were asking questions like, do you have anything in your pocket that we can use to, like, try to scratch with? Yeah. They to so they were checking their pockets and each one noticed they had a piece of paper in their pockets with a name on it. So that's how they knew their names. Right? So the guy who originally woke up the first, his name was Adam. Mm -hmm. The other guy's name is, and it's kind of funny because he looks at the piece of paper and it's spelled K-A-I and he's like, my name is K. Or is it Kai? I like Kai better. <laughs> yeah. so it, it was kind of funny and, and just to kind of set things, that particular character is like that the whole time. He's kind of like Goofy, no common sense, or you know, maybe some common sense, no book smart, makes like really, really dumb comments all the time, and um, kind of sometimes scaredy catish. And then, in the girl's name, her name is Mira. Mm -hmm. So, and they notice it, they start talking about the, the typewriter, like, well, maybe we're supposed to do something with this typewriter. And one guy's like, he's like, yeah, I can smash the wall with it. He's like, no, I don't mean like that. So, you know, Kai is the one that said he was going to smash the wall with a typewriter. And as he picks it up. Adam runs over and tries to grab it from him. And they're fighting over it. And Adam's finger hit the letter E. And when he did, one of the bricks slid out. And they're like, wait a minute, what did you do? And they're looking down at the typewriter. There's a piece of paper in there. And they see the letter E was pushed. So they pushed it again. And the brick went back in. So they start messing around with it, and they're like, you know, maybe we need to spell a word. And they were like, well, maybe the word escape. So they start typing that, and the bricks are going back in. They're like, well, it's not that. They tried exit. Well, it wasn't that. And then they were like, you know, I, I wish we could get some help. And one of them was like, well, try that. Try typing help. And sure enough, help opens more bricks up. So they're able to the climb the bricks. This is where. Sorry, what, what DJ? I think you give the phone a bit far and get it confused, James, because the wrong day time to get the bricks out was as it. No, it was help. I'll bet you $15 right now, DJ. It was help. I've watched this episode twice in the past hour. It was help. Or the past hour and a half. They tried other words, like escape. They um, tried to exit. And escape. And that, exit. And then that was help. Okay. DJ, DJ's playing it right now. He's looking it up. <laughs> I am because... Well, while, while you find that out, DJ, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on here. Go so, ahead. Um, so, and this is where they, you know, they really get the first glimpse of one of the characters realizing what he can do. And actually, I take that back, but I'm not going to go backwards for a second. But it's when they really realize, like, hey, wait a minute, that guy's good at this stuff. So, Adam starts, you know, jumping on these bricks, and it almost looks kind of like... um Parkour. Parkour. Right, the way he's doing, it, he's like taking these like long leaps and kind of like fancy jumps and stuff like that to get up to where that one vent is. And the other two are like, uh, you know, and of course, Cobb was like, I can do that, I'm just gonna be slower, right? So they clumsily make their way, you know, towards him. And in the meantime, he's up there trying to figure out how to open the vent because they need like a screwdriver or something. So they get down you know, while the other two are getting up. When the, before, right before they started getting up, the, the vent, the drain in the floor, a green gas started coming out of it. And that's why all of a sudden they're, you know, trying to move with some pace and trying to figure out how they're going to get that vent open. 
So they were like, well, maybe if you go back down and, and somebody get the keyboard, uh, the, the typewriter, and we can pull one of the keys off and use it, you know, like a, a screw, like a screwdriver. And they're like, we don't have time for that. And DJ and Nancy, correct me, it'll help refresh my memory here. They He like smashed through the vent, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. He, yeah, he, he just took his hand and smashed it. Yep. And he, he smashed through the vent. And they started I admit, I was wrong. I admit it, I was wrong. Well, and you're lucky that you didn't take me up on that bet. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so then they make their way, they're making their way through this vent, and they get to a part where, when they're at the end of like, a little tunnel, and what was really funny, there was an exchange, when they're figuring out, like, who's going to go in, like, first, like, what order they're entering the vent, and at this point in time, you had, like, Adam, and then Kai, and then Mirror. And Kai's like, well, I'm not going in after you because I don't want my face right up on your butt. Mm. You know, so when Kai goes in, he goes in backwards. Right. So he's not like looking at the other guy's butt. It was just kind of funny. It was just that's the type of character that Kai is. And, um, and I thought it was important to bring that little piece in. So they get to the end of the, the vent tunnel where the ducks and there's like this other passageway there. And there's like a rung ladder. When you get to the end, there's like another vent. He just kicks it open and uh, almost fell into this big open way. And then there's like some, uh, like the wire ladder type metal, like little wire rungs in the concrete that goes up. So they climb that up and they open up the hatch and then boom, they're in this forest. So, do either one of you want to take it from here? Uh, yeah, I will take it from here. Okay, so go into forest. Now, you know, go so long. And, you know, I will go and say just because it's obvious for if you want it, but Kai and Adam, the guy who initially woke up, still come at each other's throats with everything they do. But, you know, they walk through the worst, and you know, Kai, he's not brave at all. He gets scared with mirror sets on a bridge, which funny. Funny because you know, and you know, he also gets scared by an album with mirror discovered that he's able to understand what the album is saying. Now, I'm saying the owl because I'm not at that part yet, Jake. So, I'm... DJ, what, what did she discover about the owl? What did she say about the owl? Now, does that why I might be messing up, but I believe it was, you know, the owl sounds sad or lonely. I lonely. I guess. But he then did continue to walk those steps into the forest. They come up to this electrified fence. But 
the way they found out it was a little fight is kind of being the couple lovable so real of the group tries to climb over and when she tells you to do that and uh, not literally that good so they walk along the roof of the fence until they come to the door but you know I would be the smart one since uh, it's probably going to suck us. We need five ways to turn the power off. Now, they proceed to walk back towards the world. They find a abandoned I'm going to refer to it as a laboratory because that's what it seems like to me was a lab. And, you know, they find files that will eventually help them out. You know, they'll build in their inventory. And they'll just, they end up finding these three cases from the folders I just said. They won't speculate on, oh, what could this be? How could we go here? we like, secret experiments by the government, that type of stuff. And, you know, they some upon these three broken cages, like, do we have powers that we don't know about? Now, you know, Alan's wanting to show souls look well. Kai's wanting to live. And either they have an army, but Kai is unleashed. I will live without you. Cause I was like, okay, good, good, do it. He's like, well, I will leave in a few moments. But, you know, he walks outside, Kyrus, to me, and says, do you want to go with him? Oh, what? She continues refugee to follow Kevin, not say a war. If she did, I don't remember, but I don't, I do believe that she didn't respond to him at that moment. But when Kai goes outside to walk away, he hears free howls. And, you know, he thinks, oh, just that scares me. I'm going to go back to he tells Adam Rebuff that they hear it again and they freak out like, 
what could this be? And then we transition to a thought of these three big words. I'm, for right now, I'm going to focus them as demon dolls because that's what they look like. Day. I like the three demon dogs had toes to laugh and you know the group finds them saves them and they run off toes the gate. Now, the dogs are tempted to Adam's I didn't mention this before, but he pulls out the key when they find a wolf and tries every key to every the door, and I believe it was the Second to last key that unlocked the door. And did, they, yeah. Did you mention that they found the power switch? Oh, uh, no. So, yeah, they did find the power switch, which was on a tree and one from them talk about this, I'm going to mention something that, well, I'm going to mention it and I'm going to see what it is here. But, you know, the self power unlocked the door, went through it, they and now, Lauren told a cliff, but they bought a purple yellow-haired man off in the ditch, and he comes up talks to the, I don't remember his exact. Ones, but he offers them help. They say yes, please help. Well, no, they say yes, help us. Now he asked them what's the magic wall. He asked them, I believe, twice. The second time was more. With, like, with the magic world and Adam or Leo of the Good says please and they followed to a desert wasteland which I'm gonna let someone else take it from there. And before we move from that, what I think is important was after he said, say the magic word, Adam said, please, nothing happened right away. And then he was like, help, please. And I want to call that out because I think we're going to find, if we think back to the typewriter, and help was the word that they typed. And there's something else that happens a little bit later. I think the magic word is actually help. Mm -hmm. I would believe so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing was when they were looking in the um, the shack that they found, or hut, I mean, whatever it's called, um, he found a satchel. Adam found a satchel. He goes, I think this will be useful. So he put a flashlight in there, and he put um, a wrench in there, and there was a map and everything that he put in there. And the map is a key. Because when they up and looked at the map, the only thing that was there was where they're at right now. 
So he said, well, let's just pull this up because this might be helpful later on. And, all. and it was during that when um, Kai and Adam were arguing back and forth and everything. And my aunt, she yelled, shut up or um, yeah, shut up or be quiet or something. She just yelled at them. And that triggered the the dogs. And um, when they heard that, that's when they start running towards back to the house they were at, the hut, whatever. And I was like, then she said, there's dogs. They're not happy. <laughs> They're, uh, they're they're mad or something or other, and I was like, that's when I realized they need to get out, get out fast. So, but yeah, I thought it was kind of ironic when they got back to the fence, to the gate, that all of a sudden now there's the power switch on the tree, whereas at the same tree that they had just passed to go find something else, that power switch wasn't there, but then it was there. So I think that guy that they found um, that met them at the cliff, he has something. He has a lot to do with it. It's either that, or they were just very oblivious to that power switch that was right there by. Yeah, the yeah. It's yeah. one of the two. It either magically appeared, or I don't know how they could have missed it. So it, it had to have like appeared or been put there after they left that section. Because it's literally like right there behind the gate. It would have been right behind their back. So man, turn around, they would have seen it. Right. Yeah. No, I will say this number. Well, it's about to show, but I'm doing my best to say to top it because it's not as bad as Dragon Prince. But, yes, I have seen the show. I know what happened, so, yeah. And, and one thing I want to mention that I did not think about earlier when I was talking about when they were in the room, and from, from the start of the room all the way to now, there's several times where they were trying to figure out, like, where they were at or how they got there, and the, the topic kept being brought up like are we dead yeah so that 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 gets talked about a lot not just this episode but going forward it always comes up in conversation they're like no we're not dead so it's it's, it's kind of funny but I, I feel like that's going to be a key part here too but i'm just not i've not really gone too far past these two episodes i've seen a little bit of the third episode just because i didn't realize the second one had ended yet Okay, that makes sense. But, yeah. So, go ahead. Next to you. So. All right, so when they're at the cliff and they finally say, tell the guy, he says, help, please. It's like this portal opens up and they fall through the portal. And then when the dogs get there, the portal's closed they're gone and they got to ask them if they want the magic word, he's gone too. So it's like, we don't even know where he went, but it shows. So in episode two, they fall through the portal and they land it in, in the desert. So while they're laying there and everything, cause you know, they're out cold again, Adam opens his eyes and then there's two, um, I want to say, I, I do feel is needed to say that we all go into episode two now because yeah. we ended when the pool opened and they fell through. Hey, Lexia, of course, I'm trying Anyways, Nancy, sorry, I just felt that needed to be said. <laughs> so I thought, I, thought, I thought I said, but anyway, so in the episode two, they land in the desert. And when the, he opens his eyes, there's um, two, two things standing over him. And they're 
bulls, but they're on, you know, they're like the body is the is the person and the head is the animal, a bull or oxen and everything. And they talk in this other language. So he closes, and then he closes his eyes again. Well, when they wake up, they they wake up and they were in the um. No, they woke them up because they walked them through town, and you hear everybody no. talking through town and everything, and to they get to where they're putting them like in the jail, but they had them the hands tied up, and so they're talking about where they're at now and how they're going to get out of there. And then, like you said, Kai Cape's going, he goes, we're dead. He goes, they're going to eat us. I just know they're going to eat us. <laughs> but while they're walking through town and everything, the girl goes, well, maybe I can talk to them, you know, because she was, she could understand what they were saying. And um, they, she goes, and Adam asks, what are they saying? And they go, we're tired of all these humans coming here all the time and he goes well, what does that mean so to me that was a key that for some reason humans are coming to where they're at so she tries to talk to them and it makes them mad and then next thing this they say what they say and he goes what did she say and i'm asked what was said and she goes well they said that toro is going to eat us instead so they get back into this um it's not a ring, but it's like uh, pyramid. Yeah, well, you know, when they walked in, it was more like a I won't say house. It's like a house, but it's not a house. But then when they walked them to where these um, rings were on the wall, and then you they showed the um, Toro bull. And he was like chewing on a bone and everything. And so then the other two ones, when they heard him coming, they ran because they say he's coming to eat them. So I want to say like back in like when they put, you know, took the people out in the ring and, you know, and the bulls and everything, but this is more like a different house, a house with different rooms and everything that had in there, because they were running through tunnels and everything, because Adam got free first, then he found a sharp object to cut the ropes. Well, they were always, all three of them were running in different places and everything, and they finally caught up with each other, and they were in, ended up where he, the bull was at the same, in the main place. In this room where the room was round and everything, but there was this hole in the wall. So Adam distracted him. Everybody, the other two got in there. Then he got in there. And then the bull tried to get through the hole and Kai's teasing him and everything. And they tell him, You shouldn't do that. So they started walking. And hmm. all of a sudden it got dark. And she goes, well, don't you have a flashlight in that satchel? He pulls out the flashlight. It comes on and then it goes off. So the batteries are dead. And the next thing you see is it's light in there again so they can see where they were walking. And they get to where they see this light at the end of the tunnel. And Kai goes, no, don't go to the light. That means we're going to be dead. <laughs> He's always talking about that. So he, Adam said, y'all stay right here. So he gets to the light, he goes, and there's this kitchen. And this is ladies cleaning, I mean, cooking and everything. So he mentioned, motions them to come and everything. And the feed smells good and all. And the girl goes, I don't know about y'all. She goes, but I'm hungry. So she walks in, the, in there and the lady's cooking at the stove. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry. And she goes, I don't want to bother you or, you know, try to scare you. And the lady looks at her, she goes, oh, I've been expecting you. So it's like, how did you know we were coming? I was coming. She goes, I know everything. So she sat down and she goes, well, I'm not alone. And then Adam walks in and she was like surprised to see him. But I was like, oh, you sit down. There's plenty for everybody. And then Kyle was sitting there. I do not love to act like Eddie. 
And he goes, he goes, his stomach starts growling. He goes, well, if I'm going to die, I'm not going to die hungry. I'm going to die with a full stomach. So he goes in and the lady's surprised. She goes, oh, well, that's all right. So she has three bowls of soup for him and everything. And then um, one of them recognizes something about the soup. It was a, the, oh, no. He was telling how good the soup was. And she goes, oh, that's fine, because it spawned the bones from what Toro leaves behind is what I put in it to make it taste so good. <laughs> so the, Mara and um, Adam go, oh, and uh, Kai just drinks, eats, drinks it all up. So in the meantime, they're trying to say, well, we need to leave. You know, and she said, y'all not going anywhere. Y'all home now, this, that, and the other. And um, they were like, no, we really need to leave. We need to find our way home. And uh, she goes, this is your home. And so when they get up, she um, had a, she ends up on top of Kai. And you can see that, like, she's trying to take the life out of Kai and everything. And so Adam hits, and she turns into a witch. So she's taking the life out of Kai. So Adam hits her over the head with a bone and knocks her out. So they were like, okay, we really need to get out of here because this isn't good. Well, when they go to leave, there's another one at the entrance, and she goes, what have you done to my sister? So she goes after she goes after Adam, I think. It's either Adam or the girl. And so um, I think it was Adam. So they get her off of Adam and knock her out and everything else. So as they're going through back through the tunnel, Kai goes, there's a third one. And they're like, how do you, goes, how do you know that? He goes, there's always three with riches. <laughs> and they were like, how do you know that? He goes, I just know there is. And all of a sudden they hear the sound. And it's like, they don't know where it's coming from. They couldn't see what's behind them, in front of them. And all of a sudden they show it. It's on, on top of them, this it's another witch and she's crawling on the wall and I was on the ceiling and everything. So then she jumps and she's down and she's on top of the girl or whichever one she's trying to get and everything. No, I'll take it back. As they're trying to leave, she grabs the, the um, ankle of Kai and she's trying to pull him, but they get him. He ends up kicking her to get her off of him and everything. And so they start going, and they not. I forgot how they knocked her out, but they get. No, they didn't knock her out. They get to the end of the tunnel where they were going, and it's in the desert. So as they're in the desert and everything, she goes, "Oh, you'll come back home. There's no place like home, and everything." And so she start realizing she goes to step out, but it's sun. So when she reaches her arm out, it starts to burn, you know, like the Wicked Witch of the West. So I was like, and they're like, oh, that's a key right there that they can't come out in the sun. So they're walking in the desert and everything. And um, all of a sudden they, they're like, we got to keep our heads because, you know, it's going to be hot and everything. They get hot. And all of a sudden they think they see water and it's just a mirage and everything. Then the next thing they see these three things on horses, and they're like, oh, it's just a mirage. And I was like, oh, no, it's not a mirage. So they try to run, but they aren't, the things are on horses, so they grab them and they go off with them. But before that ends, um, before that, we were in the desert, our car had asked to see the map. And Adam goes, there's nothing on the map. He goes, well, just let me see it. He goes, no, there's nothing on the map. And then Mara goes, just let him see the map. He was right about the witches. Let's, let's see about the map. So they take the map out. And every place, the place that they've been is all of a sudden on the map. So they kind of had a clue then. Let's just follow the map to see where it goes next. And when they did, that's when they got the three things on the horses came by and picked them up and was taking them off. Now, one thing I want to mention that the witch said as they, as they were leaving, she kept saying, death is your friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she kept saying, death is your friend. So 
And one of the things that was on the horse was, um, it was like this. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. so it was a no. skeleton that was on the horse. That was. Sorry, go ahead. I said there was a skeleton on a horse. And then went one of like the body and then the head was the bull. Was one of them and then something else. It was a mummy. I think. Oh, yeah, a mummy. Yeah. And the other one, I don't think it was actually so the the, the bull people, Nancy, they're minotaurs. Yeah. I, I don't think that was a minotaur that was on one of the horses. I just think it was a like a warrior warlord type demon that had a helmet with horns on it. Okay. Yeah. I believe that too. And I think, I think the other thing you were thinking about happens in the next episode. And this is where it's hard for me to know what was what because the, the intro, the credits in the intro for the show being on the streaming the way they were on Netflix, they transitioned really quick. And yeah. I think I had literally like turned my head or I was, I was doing something briefly and didn't realize it went to the next episode. Well, it's because Netflix has the all of play. So it... Once it hits, you know, where the credits begin, it gives you that little countdown till the next episode begins. So, yeah. No. Go ahead, Nancy. I don't know if y'all noticed this. Uh, so I'm quite sure you did. Different things in these in this cartoon and everything, especially the first one, is taken from many different horror movies. So, like the the first one, the first scene with them in the cement room is taken from the movie Saw. And I was like, I didn't like that movie. I still don't like that movie. <laughs> And then I said, um, and then when they got to where um, they were in the shack, I know it was taken from a different movie, but I just I cannot place that place that one. But I was like, you know, even the one with um, all right. So I made me Jurassic Park with the fence or something like that. And then in the second one with me, the, the witches and everything, which they showed her climbing on um, the witch climbing on the mm -hmm. ceiling. <laughs> I'm like, I know what maybe that was, but I can't think of the name. But I was like, that gives you the heebie jeebies. <laughs> yeah, I get you. No, you know, I would say. For episode two, yes, what they did do because two was a pillman, and I will say the mentors did not wake them up, they woke up on the uh, in the jail, and then the mentors. Basically, tied their hands to their backs and marched them to Torosa's pyramid, which, I mean, it was a pyramid. I mean, it, it was in that basic shape of one just the entrance was more like square if you know what I mean. So, yeah. The, the doors had the kind of the, the scallop top, where it's like yeah. a little round shape, but then it was like square. Yeah. It wasn't pyramid. And then, see what you're talking about, like with the, uh, like the mazes, basically the inside of the pyramid was a labyrinth. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't, couldn't think of a name. Yeah. So, I mean, it was... The show itself where we did a big show of Rome was definitely a good one <laughs> for, you know, forgive me if I'm really saying facts already, so, sorry, but when they went through the light, you know, they were basically in a 50 cycle kitchen at that point was, I mean, the first witch was dressed up as a 50s housewife, which, you know, that was good, entertaining, and I think, you know, the whole references to the movies might not have been intentional, but it was good to see that in this type of animation, I mean, because do you remember this show was made for kids 12 to 15, I will say. So, in that age range, I doubt they will ever say the head tone was from a age movie. They, they would just think, oh, that's cool and creepy because this so in its entirety is like a, it's not a whole show, it's a mystery show and you know they just try to find their way home. Now what I wanted to say is that in the first episode when they were trying to get out of the brick room, that game and you know what they were doing all of the gallery to get the central flashlight all that. It really gave me video game vibes. Wouldn't you agree, Jeff? Right. Yep. Hey, DJ. Yeah. Something's wrong with chat because um, Jamie said they're all putting, getting error message that they and I got the same thing. They've been trying to type in chat and they can't. Well, I mean. I mean, P. Jesus just came in and typed something, but. I, I mean, that's nothing that I can control. I mean. Yeah. Uh, what I would recommend is. Go out if you're on for close your YouTube app away, like, you know, set it down for your background tasks and re 
open it and see if that fits it because okay. And Jamie said they've done all that. Her and they've been typing and everything. Now mine because you've got people in there and it says only one. Yeah, no, I mean I don't know what to tell you. It's, I mean, honestly, it's nothing I can control, so, I mean, um, um uh, yeah, I, I see Jamie now. Yeah, I see you, Jamie. You're okay. But, yeah, no, it's something with YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I can't help that. I wish I could. But, anyway, so, guys, this show, <laughs> as, as it goes, on it does get more complex I will say that and you know if you have Netflix I would recommend you check it out because and I'm going to like the list so, I personally give it a 8 out of 10. I mean, that's a high rate to what I have to give it shows. But, yeah, for me, 8 out of 10. And she gets it, she so for me, right now, at this point in time, I'm actually going to give it a 10 out of 10. And there's a bunch of reasons for it, but some of the main reasons, it's got me, like, really, really, really intrigued. Like, I'm going to finish watching this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm at least going to, I'm gonna, you know, at least get a few more episodes in, but I'm going to continue watching it. But, and even though, like... A lot of times when I'm up here and I'm talking about something, there's always something that usually annoys me or that I'm going off about. In this show, I've not found that yet, right? Like, yeah, there was the ridiculous thing with that power switch. But, you know, realistically, I'm thinking that's magically appeared. Like, there's something behind that. There's something more to that switch. It was, mm -hmm. there's no way it was there the whole time. So I didn't go off about that, even though, like, I was talking about, you know, they had to be oblivious if it was there. But um, it just, it, this show really captures me. It's, it's a good, like, you know, it's, it's got adventure, it's got action, it's got mystery. But then you also have the character development, and they're like, they don't even know themselves. They're learning themselves. Right. You, you know, and yeah. we, we're learning that, you know, Adam, he's very athletic. He's very strong. Um, you know, Mira can communicate with not just animals, but also other creatures other languages she can communicate with them and then now here in the in episode two we saw that kai he seems to know some stuff about lore he seems to be a lore master so you know they're, they're learning themselves and it's just making it like an overall awesome journey with all elements into it so right now it's a 10 out of 10 you know that could change by the time i get done with the with this season i don't know but I'm just going on a limb and saying, at this minute, it's a 10 out of 10. I'm mm. with you because I like the fact that, okay, they didn't make it scary, scary, but they did put elements of different scary movies in there. And, like, um, because, like I said, um, the movie Saw, but then when you think of the desert, um, like The Mummy, the movie Mummy, the Mummy with um, what's his face, and you know when they go into the pyramid and everything, and that they're all trying to get the treasure out of there. So 
but you know it does keep you on your toes because you there you're focused on what they're doing but then you miss what's behind them or in surrounding them so but like you said with that switch we we see it that they didn't see it but when you're scared like that and you're running, do you really pay attention to see if something's like that surround or not? You know, you, you've been, if anybody's, you know, you've been in that situation that you're so scared that you can't speak, you're not going to be paying attention to anything around you anyway. Yep. Yep. So. I thought it was overall it was really good. I don't have we don't have Netflix anymore, so I can't watch it. But uh, I'm good. With, you can tell me later, Jason, how how the other episodes are. <laughs> no. Uh, so that is cool. Now I may have missed it. What did you rate it? Ten. I can say Miss Jason, ten out of ten. Okay, okay. I thought I missed that full second. That's why I asked. Okay, now guys, with that old set, we're going to the wheel of cocktails, and we will be deciding what we talk about next week. Let's spin the wheel, and we are marks, and ooh, a joy in the feathers. If I remember correctly, I believe. That's a new Netflix show, so, but let me double check that, because if not, and I, then I will find it. Ah, uh, yes, it's on Netflix, so. Julie and the Phantoms. Cool. So, now, this is a unique one because I have not seen Julie and the Phantoms at all. So, <laughs> It's gonna be new for all of us. So. <laughs> cool. With that being said, I will play this. I'm sorry for any. Challenges with the chat tonight. That's on YouTube, not me. I care of that. But you know, thank you for joining us. And you know, come back next week to hear what me next is of doing. Fantastic. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.